Hi everyone. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my series, Let's Learn Public Health. As sad as I am to say this, it seems our series is winding down to a close. This is the second to last episode I have planned out, but who knows, I may add supplementary videos in the future. Today's topic is careers in public health. Now, you may think that community health is limited to a select few areas, like government jobs or working at the CDC, but I can tell you that's not the case. Public health is so incredibly broad and far-reaching that workers can have jobs in nearly every health-related sector. Let's take a closer look for more information. Public health careers are experiencing a surge in job growth, anywhere from 7% to 33% in the most sought-after fields, which include health education, public health nurses of all stripes, and statisticians. Congress has invested billions of dollars circa 2021 to expand the workforce and bring new recruits into the job market with the advent of the pandemic. With the COVID-19 pandemic shining a light on our public health care apparatus and the workers that occupy its ranks, it's no surprise there's more of an interest than ever before in the work that our community health workers do. There is also a higher demand than ever for a large batch of public health workers of all stripes and fields like quality assurance, epidemiology, occupational health and safety, biostatistics, research, global health, health policy and management, advocacy, health promotion and disease prevention, etc. As an example of a public health professional you may have seen before, think of someone who came to your school to do sex education programs or perhaps an anti-smoking or AIDS awareness seminar. That person was working as a health educator and prevention specialist. In order to talk about careers in public health, I want to touch on collegiate public health education and degree programs. First, we should make distinction between a degree, a certification, and a certificate. A degree in public health can have different names and be held by different people. A bachelor's degree will most likely be held by someone who is primarily interested in a health science first and foremost and has not yet graduated with a degree in another specialty area. Now those who want to pursue an MPH will either have relevant experience in the field with another similar degree, a BSN or a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing is a common one, and subsequently pursue an MPH for access to more senior level positions and pay increases, or will come from a separate profession, like business with an MBA, for example, and pursue an MPH as a career change, since most MPH programs will allow you into their program with a few necessary prerequisites if you have a degree in another field. A certificate, on the other hand, shows proficiency in a certain skill. Finally, a certification is a set of initials and a title added to someone's name that exemplifies mastery in that subject of training. CIC, a certification in infection control, is one of the most prominent ones in public sector health. Also, many people get certifications through a certificate. It gets a little murky. Our first career field of interest is that of biostatistics which classifies itself as the use of data collection for the application of healthcare. As you can tell by the nomenclature of the title, it's a subset of statistics. So that means it uses mathematical analysis to help influence policy decisions and compile data. Looking at trends, dips, peaks, plateaus, etc., and applying population and demographic data to aid in research and development are the primary tasks of this field. Tracking outbreaks, disasters, shortages, surpluses, and more is a big job for the biostatistician, as informatics drives on being able to see whole pieces of data while also being able to zoom into smaller parts to see what's happening in specific cohorts. Clinical trials are often done with the help of a biostatistician, and as such, they work closely with epidemiologists and clinical researchers. Remember last episode when we discussed surveillance? That was informatics at work. Prevention is always key. As you can tell, this field has a lot of math. Some positions you can hold in the area, of course, are a biostatistician, a health services manager, database administrator, systems analyst, and an informatics specialist. 
Next area of study is community health, which can also be used synonymously with public health when using it as an umbrella term. However, shrinking it down a couple notches, it becomes its own unique field of study. I'll encompass this one with two other fields, behavioral health and health promotion disease prevention education and uh, behavioral health, social health, and minority health. One of the largest specialties next to EPI, community health and all the rest of the specialties in this category utilize a more holistic approach that strays farther away from hard data and number crunching and instead draws us into the community to directly confront those with public health issues on the ground. Taking inspiration from the social sciences like sociology, psychology, and even political science and economy to an extent. Lots of public relations and wellness programs. Governments at the federal and state level can recruit organizers to serve as outreach coordinators and marketing specialists to get projects off the ground. For example, community water fluoridation would see a health promotion campaign and an associate sent out to schools with a team behind them to educate students and faculty. Grant writing is also something you can see in this field since it is tied to the continuing of healthcare adjacent education. This is a field where you will see the most resources being given directly to underserved populations, as well as the most concern towards grassroots mental health care and social work. Wellness and health education are a big parts of this field and creating plans to decrease health disparities in chosen communities is paramount. Your typical health educators qualify for this field, as well as your community outreach worker running a clinic and the administrator for your city's homeless shelter. Health educator, program coordinator, and public relations manager are also jobs under this field. I want to speak about minority health and healthcare disparities as a field of work as well. The main task these workers face is working within our system to try and eliminate barriers to care and understand why they exist. These barriers can be racial, sexual, economic, dependent on location, etc. Since the focus is on underserved communities, this field is also good for those who would like to do community outreach focused on minorities and target specific groups to redistribute important resources to. Education, like all the previous sectors under community health, is paramount. In recent years, migrants at the southern border have become a focus for this area. Workers advocate on their behalf and make sure they receive adequate medical care without prejudice. Workers in this field often speak more than one language to communicate with their target population better. Some other jobs in this field are public health nurse and research analyst. Finally, under the, the community health umbrella, we've come to social and behavioral health care jobs where workers act as social workers, both clinical and non-clinical. Shout out to my sister. Counselors, psychologists, and psych nurses. In this setting, these workers focus on the mental well-being of the entire community and work to maintain good mental and emotional health in their population. An area where caring really shines through is a focus on putting a stop to substance abuse, doing casework for sexual abuse cases, sessions of therapy, and referring to rehab programs or setting up abuse shelters and crisis centers. Epidemiology is our next field for discussion and the one I think we most associate with public health. It is also the one I've mentioned the most thus far. Epidemiology is a mixture of biostats and community health. They work to monitor diseases and understand their origins whilst developing solutions for them, such as vaccines. Understanding threat models, statistics, viral replication, reservoirs of contamination, sanitation and hygiene, contact tracing, social determinants of health, health equity, and more are required for this job. In addition, since this job is pretty math heavy, it helps to have prior experience working in research and data analysis. Government agencies often employ EPIs, but they can also find jobs in the private sector working with pharmaceutical companies. Research analyst is probably the most common job along with, of course, your run-of-the-mill epidemiologist. Environmental health overlaps with earth sciences, agriculture, animal biology, horticulture, and more. Sustainability is a big concern for environmental health specialists, which leads them to study and take action on projects related to pollution, waste disposal, clean water initiatives, sanitation, and climate change. 
If you've ever heard of a climate change scientist, you probably have some type of background in public and environmental health or have a field adjacent to it. This is truly a field that concerns itself with global and local populations alike, with many populations to focus on. In some cases, you will find workers who, apart or in tandem with their colleagues, work in the social population and are thus an extension of community health workers. They concern themselves with crime, safety, education quality, and social mobility. Those who work for OSHA would qualify in this category as well. Careers can include environmental scientists and engineers as well as quality assurance technicians. Global Health is up next, another one of my favorite subfields. Global Health, as its name suggests, focus on the biggest population of all, the international community, while also narrowing its focus when the situation calls for it to certain geographic areas or countries and territories. Usually, this position combines research and policy planning to create meaningful changes in areas that are traditionally underserved, but not always. I know many programs focus their efforts on the Global South and MENA slash Asia, and MENA, by the way, is the Middle East and Northern Africa. But of course, there are opportunities all over the globe. Eliminating health disparities is a prime goal of the global healthcare worker, as is improving health outcomes and fostering healthy habits. This is the field that seems to me to have some of the more political ties, which can be good or bad depending on your prerogative. Note that this job by nature has a lot of travel if you choose more on the scene jobs. Many workers actually join the Peace Corps or nonprofits or AmeriCorps. Communication is key in this perfection. Job positions include refugee coordinator and HIV AIDS program director. Health policy and management go hand in hand. A mixture of political economy, finance, sociology, and of course, healthcare knowledge factor into the foundational principles of this discipline. A mixture of healthcare ethics, law, and community health, this is a field where those who enter are often seeking to make tangible changes in their country, state, or federal laws or policy practices. Working in tandem with other policymakers and healthcare specialists, health policy workers are responsible for drafting policies and advocating for those policies that will serve the most utilitarian good. Most often, they manifest as the upper level managers of a project, consortium, or business. Of interpersonal communication skills and public relations knowledge, their focus on improving health outcomes at a systemic level is suitable for those desiring to affect decisions made about everything from Medicaid and Medicare to firearm death prevention protocols and best practices. Jobs in this field include policy analyst and health department administrator and program coordinator. Maternal and child health is up next, also called mother baby care and mother child care. This field encompasses obstetric and gynecology and its focus is on the care of a mother and child in the pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, and postpartum care. WIC and CHIP are programs that fall under maternal and child health and Planned Parenthood and other reproductive care organizations help women in need of service. Combining this with global health's focus is a focus on infant and child mortality, access to food and water, infanticide, and helping expectant mothers who are migrants get to safety and receive quality health care. Understanding social determinants of health are paramount to understand for this field. As women and children have historically been neglected by social services due to their age, sex, and gender presentation. Workers don't just work with children from birth until infancy, they continue to work with children across their adolescence until they become adults. Caring for children also means the workers must be familiar with and deal with common childhood occurrences like puberty, body growth, and mental health changes. Midwives are a classic position in this field as well as a childhood nutritionist. Some miscellaneous public health jobs that you may have heard of include a reporter or journalist, family health program coordinator, academic policy advisor, school nurse, emergency response coordinator, bioterrorism researcher, engineer, behavioral research scientist, NCO international aid worker, vaccine researcher, and ecologist. Okay, wow, that was a lot of information. It's time to shift gears once more and discuss the sites of these workplaces and what kind of work they offer. 
private sector work often manifests as consulting, analyst positions, marketing, sales, advertising, insurance, and pharmaceuticals. Academia is another option that may be public or private. Religious institutions may also crop up both academic and non-academic. Finally, a research university is self-explanatory. It's a college that focuses its efforts duly on research and healthcare and teaching about it. Government or public sector work most often manifests as AmeriCorps, Peace Corps, HHS, CDC, state and local health departments, and FEMA slash emergency response orgs. Nonprofits are another aspect of the public sector and are usually catered to specific issues like women's health, housing, or disaster relief. Of course, the major employees for public health officials are the one I've been using as my sources, the CDC being the prime one. Other organizations include state and local health departments, the National Institute of Health, hospitals, duh, <laughs> colleges, insurance companies, and nonprofits. Our final chapter of today's video is to list some of the organizations specializing in public health information dissemination, research, education, recruiting, advocacy, and certification. From publichealth.org, the list is as follows. Professional Organizations The American Public Health Association Founded in 1872, APHA champions the health of all people through science-backed advocacy on public health issues and policies. Members join a network of 25,000 peers and enjoy perks like access to award-winning publications, professional development opportunities, and unique discounts. The Associations of Schools and Programs of Public Health This nonprofit organization represents schools and programs accredited by the Council on Education for Public Health. Membership is open to institutions only, but educators and other individuals can take advantage of ASPPH resources including academic data, webinars, and curriculum support. National Association of County and City Health Officials Founded in 1965, NACCHO, which sounds like NACHO, <laughs> advocates for local health departments across the United States. The nonprofit's 13,000 members enjoy benefits such as an online toolbox, special assistance grants, networking opportunities, and program resources. Society for Public Health Education. This nonprofit independent professional association represents nearly 4,000 health education professionals and students. SOPHE so, uh, promotes healthy behaviors, communities, and environments through advocacy and awareness campaigns. Membership benefits include networking opportunities, peer reviewed journal access, and professional development resources. Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Epidemiology APIC unites over 15,000 members, including nurses, epidemiologists, and other public health professionals dedicated to advancing the practice of infection control. Membership benefits include networking, research, career, and professional development resources. And that's it for this episode, folks. Hope you've enjoyed. I'm looking forward to the day I can join this awesome workforce full of amazing people. Public health workers of all stripes, thank you for your wonderful work. This country and this world would not be what it is without your dedication to excellence. Thank you very much for following me in this series so far. We'll be wrapping up next episode. Until I see you again, this is Fina saying goodbye and good day. <laughs>